three. Deke, hear me. I've intercepted the plans. I'm sending them to you. You have to get them to the mediocre modeler. Hurry. I think they're going to find me. I'll get back with you later. Normally, when I start a project, all I have is a screen grab or something out of a magazine, an idea in my head, whatever. I don't have anything to go on concrete. I either have to, to, to scratch something out on a piece of paper or just let it grow on the table to where the picture I have in my head. But not this time. <laughs> no, not this time. This time we have plans. We have actual plans. The beautiful part about these plans are... What's the beautiful part? Where are they? Ha, ah, hold on. beautiful part about these plans are they're in 144th scale. I'll go into a little bit of detail later on where I got them from. Uh, there was a um, model that was made of the, oh, let's introduce it. It's the Space Academy Seeker. I love this ship. It's a great looking ship. It's more falls into the shuttle category as opposed to like the fighter, although it does have weapons on it. But just from day one, I saw this thing, and, and I knew I wanted to pilot it. I like the outside better than the inside. The inside looked a little bit too comfy, uh, but it's just, it's just a great design. It's, it's partially, I think, modeled off of the, uh, the uh, space shuttle a little bit. You, know, you definitely have some cues there. The interesting thing is these parts here are actually... Saturn V, 144th scale, Saturn V, stage 2 parts. And it is to scale with that part. That is, when I found out that's what it was and, and I could get it, the other parts of the Saturn V did not go unused. I used that in the interstellar model. Uh, but that's a story for another time. The other part that was going to be difficult to build was this front end. I was going to have to sculpt it. Never sculpted anything before and which is basically how I got the plans. I emailed, I had been emailing James Small, James, yeah, James Small for a long time. He's the one that uh, had done a model of the Seeker a long time ago and I was trying to see if there was any interest in getting that going again and there just really wasn't that interest and I found somebody who had built one of these models and they had cast the nose piece because they were going to make themselves a fleet well he was kind enough to send me one of his castings so I've got that part taken care of I got that part taken care of I got this thing licked. All the rest of that is just styrene. So I think uh, I've already been to the store and I've gotten some styrene that that we can work on. So uh, work with rather. So I'm going to get working on this first bottom piece. Might as well start from the bottom up. So here's the plan. I photocopied the pictures from the poster. So I could cut them out and use them as patterns for the bottom and the sides out of styrene. The piece I'm cutting out now are for the lower half sides, the left and right. I only needed one because I was just going to cut it out on the styrene and flip it over and that way to have both sides. I already started by marking off the bottom of 
this, I'm measuring it out, make sure that my, my lines are on for the width. And so now all I really have to do is score it, pop it, and cut it out. Like I said, I want to maximize the use of the styrene by marking the side pieces, getting most out of your vinyl, not wasting any vinyl as, if I can help it. I'm really trying to make sure that all my pieces are as square as possible and match the plans as close as possible because it's so easy at this scale to be off. The side pieces that I'm cutting out now are going to be the left or right verticals that will be attached to the bottom piece that I just cut out. Then there are some horizontal little wing pieces that are going to come after that. So all this stuff has got to get glued together, it's got to be square, and I want to make sure I match it back to the plans that I have, because I don't have that that often. I'm using the rafter square to make sure that my vertical is plumb. So the only thing that I have left to do now is match it against the uh, plans to see how close I came. Well, even with plans, things can go awry. And, and the uh, how hard can it be to make a rectangular vinyl box? Well, pretty dang hard. Uh, I ended up having to trim a little bit, but at the end of the day, we got uh, we got our pieces, we got our winglets that we need to uh, go on and glue on there. Got both your left and your right, and then next video we're going to look at how we got this part back here done because it didn't extend all the way back so we'll see you in the next video hey go build something pew 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 pew